oftentimes when I struggle with something or when something I just I just mess up in my journey, I use it then to help others not mess up. That's just what I've learned. I've learned not only in the business world, not only in the spiritual world, let's study other people to see how they did it. There's none other better to study than people in the Bible, than our heroes in the Bible. And I love, I love David so much because, number one, he's a man after God's own heart. That's just what I want to be. That's who I want to be. But not only that, he was a shepherd and turned into a warrior. He was a servant turned into a king. And this is a summary of a story that I want to talk about today and get into why I want to talk about this today. When David came up against the Philistine giant, this huge giant that was intimidating the whole army, all of the Israelites, he recognized that his fight was not against flesh and blood. Goliath taunted David and cursed his God, saying, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? Come here, and I'll give you your flesh to the birds and the, and the wild animals. This is all in 1 Samuel 17, verses 43 through 44. But David trusted God and trusting in the strength of the Lord and his mighty power answered, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I love that. What a, what a scene. What, what a story. And, and where, did, where did David get that strength? And, and why do we need to have that strength? And I, I have really something I want to share with you all and, and be a little bit vulnerable. Recently, I was starting a men's group and, you know, I'm leading a prayer movement with, with, with uh, some colleagues at work and church and the weight and the pressure made me feel like I had imposter syndrome. And not only that, it tempted me into sinning. Here's the thing. Satan knows where we're weakest. And thankfully, thankfully, because of who I know about God, because of the boundaries I've set up in my life, because of the accountability I have with other men and my wife, I was able to fight it and and, and quickly, quickly diminish it. But and here's, here's what Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. Paul says that in our fight with this enemy, we must be aware of his tactics. What are, you, what are you talking about, James? We have an enemy? Yes, we have an enemy. We have an enemy. And let me tell you something. Here's the truth of this enemy. It is not your flesh and blood. It is not. And, and yes, you know, Satan doesn't cause everything. It's our sin. It's our evil in, inside of us. It's our wickedness. Trust me, that's a part of the equation. But right now, I want to study the enemy with you real quick. And here's what Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says in the New Living uh, transla- Translation. For your, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against enemies evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Come on. Number one, our enemy is powerful. They have authority to rule the world. They have authority to rule in the world. Let me repeat that. They have authority to rule in the world that you and your children live in. Number two, they are evil. They use power to wreak destruction. They they like darkness, not light. Wickedness, not good. All over your life. Number three, they are shrewd. They scheme. They strategize. They, They prowl around, Scripture says, like a roaring lion, ready to prance and destroy you. So what does that mean for you and me? What does that mean? Here's what it means. Here's how we can fight. Here's how you and I can fight. And we must fight. 
We must fight. And especially in the West where, where those schemes of Satan, use, he uses good things to, to distract you. Success, money, pleasure. And by the way, pleasure was invented by God, not by Satan. So pleasure is a good thing. Enjoying your wife is a good thing. Enjoying your husband is a great thing. And, and, and enjoying the, the basketball game, the sports game, the studying, enjoying uh, your gifting is a good thing. It's when we pervert it and separate that thing that we're enjoying, that pleasure that God created as the idol, the number one thing. And God just keeps ticking, 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 ticking down. Remember, you are worshiping something always, every single day. Even today, as I woke up at 3.30 to, to pray, to get prepared, to, to, to be equipped to face the day, I know that I'm going to worship something other than God today. And that's why I equip myself with Him. Because I want it to, to land in my head and I want to punt it out super quick. And I want to live a full life. Here's how we can live a full life. Ephesians 6, 10 gives us the answer to living a full life. Be strong in your gifts, in your abilities, in who you are. No. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Not your power. Not your gifts. Not your abilities. We don't have the abilities. We didn't have the abilities to, to be put on a cross. We didn't have the ability to choose Him first. He chose us first. He sat on a cross for you and for me and took away all of our sins, the sins that we deserved wrath for, the sins that we deserved punishment for. He took that away. Thank you, Jesus. So for you and me, it is our job to stand aside and let God fight the battle for us. Then you and I can be sure that every single time we will win. So then, <laughs> it is not about who, what you do first. It's not about what you do first. It's about whose you are first. And don't believe me? <laughs> just look at the sign that says, don't touch the wet paint. Or just tell yourself, don't gossip. Or just tell yourself, don't do X, Y, Z. You will do it every time. Every single time. And, and, and here, here's the reminder once again that we said in the beginning. David, David was a shepherd before he was a warrior. David, David was a, a servant before he was a king. David had an anointing on his life. But before he could walk in that anointing, he got in the presence of God every single day. You see, when he called out to Goliath, he said, you're, you're coming against my God. He knew God, so he knew where the battle was, where the battle lay. The problem is with you and me, the reason why we aren't a warrior, the, we, the reason why we aren't walking in the anointing that God has over our life is because we don't know him. We don't know anything about him. So when the enemy comes against us, it seems like a normal part of our life. When the en enemy comes against you, you just say, yeah, I'm just weak, and you talk against yourself. And when the enemy comes against you, you just say, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep gossiping because it feels right. Screw them. I hate them anyways. And, and it just piles it on top of you. For, for the sake of God, for the sake of living a full life, get in his presence every single day. And you will walk in the anointing and the calling, whatever word you want to use, the purpose God has for you, and live a full life.